This video is going to be a practice of everything that's been learned about classes so far. Not going to be much of an explanation, so let's go into it. So we're going to make a class. We're just going to call it class one. You know, we probably want a better name for a class, you know, make a real class with a real name, but it's just for demonstration purposes. We're going to give it two attributes, attribute one with ATTR one and ATR two. First attribute will be a value seven. The second will just have the string hello. Okay, simple enough. We are going to make variable a, which is going to be equal to an instance of class one. Simple enough. And we're going to print its attribute. So we're going to print a dot attr one, and we're going to print a dot attr two. Okay, just to make sure that we get these values back. Great, we got the value seven and we got the value hello. So you can see here we've made a class um, with just regular attributes. Cool, no problem there. Now let's make another class. We'll call it class two. How darn inventive. And um, we're going to give it two variables. We're going to say attr1 again. I'm going to say it's equal to seven because I'm not a very inventive person. And um, we're going to have variable attr2. And um, we're going to make it equal to a string. Of hello right and we're going to pass in a function now that's called we'll call it fun time and it's going to print out a line of code okay easy enough right this is just to demonstrate that classes can use functions and we're going to make variable b equals object of class 2 and we're going to just use the function fun time so we're going to say b dot fun time easy enough and when we run this it should print out the words or the string a line of code right what happened there why did fun time not work oh yeah of course i need uh i need to give it parenthesis very silly very silly of me there we go, a line of code. Simple, print it out. It has worked. Make sure you put a parenthesis in your functions. They are not classes. Very naughty of me there to forget that. Now then, let's say we want to make a new class called class free. And we don't want to keep repeating this. We want all of this to be in class free. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. And we're going to say class free. We're going to put colon. And we're going to use the old class name class 2 and now this class 3 uh, should inherit all of these values right however we want to change the fun time function so we use the override keyword and we're going to say that we want to override this function and what we want to do is we want to put parentheses after this function naughty naughty we want to print out a line of actually we'll print out cheese okay print out cheese and then we'll print out a line of code okay and we're going to add another function let's say func print fun and we're going to print out something along the lines of it doesn't matter you can put whatever you like it doesn't really matter what you print out the point is we've got two separate functions right we're going to make a variable um called c which is going to be um a free object and we are going to say c dot fun time we're going to say c dot uh print fun and we're going to print C, we're going to print the string of C dot um, ATTR1 plus C dot ATTR2, just to make sure that it's inherited everything. All right, let's run that. Print fun. Oh, I bloody well put that in there. What I should have done is got rid of that and put a parenthesis after. No idea why I put that inside the parenthesis. That should work now. So, after the initial align of code printout, which comes from uh, the variable b, the fun time function, we get the word cheese and align of code printed out, which shows that the fun time's been overridden. Great. 
Then when we print from, we should get this weird uh, string here, and we do. And now we should get, you know, a seven uh, plus hello concatenated with hello. Seven hello. There we are. So you can see that this has inherited everything from two successfully, and we've overridden the fun time function. Simple enough, not too hard to do, right? Now, the last thing we need to do is show you how to use a new initializer or make a new initializer. So we're going to say class for, and we're not going to inherit this time, we're just going to make that into a new class. Um, we're going to say that the first value, so we'll say that we've got ATTR1, and we're going to say that it's an int like this using the question mark after. We're going to say variable ATTR2 is equal to a string, simple enough. And to initialize it, all we've got to do is have ATTR1. Uh, we're going to say that that's an integer. And we're going to say ATTR2 will take the argument of being a string. And quite simply inside of here we're just going to say self dot attr1 is equal to attr1 and self dot attr2 is equal to attr2 okay easy enough All right now i say variable e wow how inventive i am is equal to what, what, what? We're going to say four. We need to initialize it with a number, I'd imagine. So we'll probably say attr1 is going to be 22. And we'll say attr2 is equal to some string aliens. Great. Lovely. Loving. All right. And we're going to print d.attr1. Oopsie daisy. I didn't put the one there. And then we're going to print d.attr2. And that should print out 22 and aliens, unless I've made a mistake, which isn't that unlikely. Oh, and I haven't, fortunately, so I get 22 and aliens. So that's it. I'll just have a little quick recap. As I say, I'm not going to explain it. This is just so you can see everything we've learned, more or less. And yeah, here's the creation of a normal regular class. Got its two attributes. Print those attributes out to check that it, you know, it comes out as we ask it to, with fruits initializer. Here we uh, have, you know, another class, and we don't this time print out its attributes because we've already confirmed that the attribute printout works there. Instead, we use the function fun time to check that, you know, this class actually has that function within it, and it works, and it did. Here we inherited everything from this class above called class two. And we overrid this function here, this fun time, to do a different printout. You can see here, cheese, a line of code. Not the best demonstration in this kind of uh, like display, but never mind. And then we made a new function called print fun, which we tested, and it printed seven hello. And then we printed out, sorry, that's, sorry, it printed out this line. And then we printed out, you know, the seven concatenated with the hello, and we got a seven hello, right? So that has worked as intended. Then we made class four, in which uh, we didn't want to define the values of the variables uh, arbitrarily. Like, I didn't want this to be seven. I wanted us to be able to choose it on creation. So we may define the variables as int and string with question mark afterwards to signal that uh, we've not defined a value for them. And in the initializer, I've made it so you can add two arguments to define the values. I defined the values here as 22 and aliens and printed them out to confirm it. And it's been confirmed. And that's more or less everything. I hope you've understood the concept. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.